I said, take it away. Okay. All right. So um, I just wanted to start out with just uh, making a mention some administrative stuff. Uh, we've been putting the meeting minutes in the um, uh, Ross wiki. Uh, and I want to move that over to discourse if nobody has any concerns. It's just the wiki page is getting kind of long and cumbersome. And it seems like uh, discourse is kind of the place to post it. I was planning on posting the meeting notes under one topic and then, uh, you know, just the meeting agenda or the, the heads up uh, invites uh, on their separate topics. Anybody have any preferences or thoughts on that? So you mean you just have one long, one long running thread containing meeting minutes? Yeah, probably with different posts and then uh, rotate it every quarter or every year. I feel like that would be really hard to, to find over time. I mean, the search of discourse is notoriously terrible. That's the one, one thing I do was uh, in the same post with the announcement of the meeting and the call for agenda, I then update the OP post with the meeting minutes and recording. That way it's easily discoverable. Well, I, and it's uh, searchable by the title and tag. I, I challenge you after, do that for a year and then try to find the meeting where you discussed a specific topic. The, <laughs> the, the you discourse just search search the, is unbearable. Search the, you, you, you just go to the uh, working group tag for your working group, and then you can scroll up and down through the the, the meetings you had. But but that only gives you the titles at that point. Like, I don't know. I, well, I, then, then cross search with the, if, you, if you're pasting the meeting minutes in the, uh, in the discourse post itself, it's all searchable either by Google or by uh, the discourse search engine. Um, we've I've actually been putting the meeting minutes in a Git repo, um, which and then link to the PR, which makes it a little bit harder to search. But at least you find the meeting minutes in one repo that you can search locally if need be. Yeah, actually, I was about to suggest that. Maybe it's too nerdy of me, but like, uh, so first, I like the idea of moving them out of the Ross Wiki, mostly because the Ross Wiki is for Ross One stuff, and uh, and yeah. so it gets very confusing for people. Um, and then, like, yeah, where to place them? It's a it's a good question. Uh, I like the idea as we have a Ross security and community repo, like that defines when the meetings happen and things like that. It would make sense for me to have like the minutes in that repo as well. And then it's fairly easy to search and to like see the history and I don't know. Well, there, well, there we go. I, I don't mind that idea. What do you think, Sid? Yeah, actually, I think that one's really easy. Um, Let's just make, we'll just make like a minutes directory and, and dump yeah. dump each meeting in its own file in that directory. Does that seem reasonable? It sounds good to me. Okay. And then I usually like leave the PR open for a week if anyone like forgot to add something and then merge it for the next meeting. Sort of like you confirm meeting minutes when you review the next meeting sort of. Okay, cool. So uh, so unless anybody objects, I'll uh, look at putting them in GitHub uh, and we'll go from there. I just think the, the current format is not only it's going away, but it, or it's ROS1, but it's also kind of cumbersome. Yeah, I, I agree. It definitely has its its issues. <laughs> yeah. So, and I do not plan on porting over any of the other stuff. I just don't think that's really worth it. We'll just leave that there. So, um, so the next item, I just wanted to mention the vol remediation uh, process. That PR is still open. Um, uh, I know I got some uh, comments from Mikhail on that. Uh, still, um, I'll, I'll address those shortly. As Waiting to see if I had any other comments. Uh, Chris from OR uh, weighed in on it as well. He's on the distribution list for the uh, vulnerabilities mailing list. So uh, I got some feedback from him. So if anybody has any more comments, please just add them into the poll request and uh, uh, yeah, we'll leave that there. Um, so the next thing I had on the agenda is uh, uh, I wanted. I, I thought we had a really good discussion last time about 
Uh, you know, we started talking about G turtle goals. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to think a little bit more about that. So I'd like to discuss that a little bit more. Uh, let me throw out, first of all, just the, the five items that I have that are on the table. Um, these are things that I've gathered together from things that we've talked about. We didn't talk about all of them specifically as Jeep Turtle goals, but I think they're things like that we as a working group are, are interested in seeing them move forward uh, specific to Jeep Turtle and we talked about them. Uh, so the five things I had were uh, the file system list security implementation. So, uh, you know, doing a security implementation on an architecture that doesn't have a file system. Um, we talked last week about the reference implementation, possibly with Move It, and uh, I mentioned in Matrix, um, I reached out uh, to one of the working group leaders for the Open Manipulation Working Group, and uh, he was really interested in it, both for uh, for the working group as well as for, for Picnic um, uh, Robotics. So I think that would be a nice kind of environment for us to continue growing security tools. We've talked about quality enhancements uh, and uh, continuing to go after those. Uh, there's a small issue about uglifying the permission files to shrink them down. Um, if we want to add that to kind of uh, uh, put that a deadline to get that out for G-Turtles. And then something we've talked about not a lot lately, but in the past is our test failures. Um, so those are the five things that I have in mind. So with that, I'll just leave the discussion open. Let me know what you think or where you want to go. Regarding move it, um, is it, I'm curious, and Sid and I have discussed this, but I want to get the inside of people a little bit more familiar with move it. If we do go through this process for that project, is it something that other people can use to build on? Or is it not really a, a, a standalone thing? Does that make any sense? It is anyone using move it going to have to customize whatever thing they're using or can they use move it as a standalone piece well mostly mostly you can uh in a sense that like most people would use the uh, the move group uh interface of move it in their project um and uh, I mean, I haven't been using, I haven't even tried Move It on Rust 2, so maybe like everything I'm doing is completely outdated and uh, not relevant. That's um, still relevant than my knowledge. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, basically, like uh, the thing, like one of the reasons we mentioned this project was like a way to have like so we saw we found some pitfalls with Top About Three, and we we're wondering if we could like uh, say, hey, look, there is an example application where you can use uh, security. But I see it still more as a testing ground for both, like, okay, are the permission site going to explode? What other issues are we going to find? Uh, how insane is going to be the load on CPU to try to encrypt that? I don't know. Um, and then to, like, actually be able to like, have a complex system to test things. One of the things we mentioned last time uh, is also the ability to specify what to sign and what to encrypt and, like, how much, like, impact that could have. Um, and so I don't necessarily see it as something that like, hey, here, we give you a movie project with security, and then you just have to put that on your robot and it's going to move and pick stuff. Um, but, uh, but more of like uh, an example application of like, hey, like, like the Total Robot 3 demo, like, look, you can use security with a robot that's moving around. And now we could say, hey, now you can like do that with a platform that's moving around and a robot arm that picks that. Um, and so for me, that was more like the idea and to tie into like other work that's going on in SRS2, that would also be a way to like experiment in like a framework like move it. Okay, if we were to put no DL files uh, in there, like could someone just like use this move it, like use move it and this no DL files and just build their thing on top and have something that they can pick you. Yeah. So more, so more of a proving ground than something that, that people can reuse necessarily. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It, it wouldn't be so much more than like a canonical example of one implementation of security. I mean, it'd be more like this is the pipeline and that you could generalize um, for other things. And so we might demonstrate the pipeline for navigation and move it. And then I think 
that's like a pretty big start. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So does that mean uh, uh, a prereq for this is actually being able to run this all in a simulator? And because uh, I don't expect we'll have you know, the hardware you need. Yeah, the simulator is a little different, especially for security, because like it's a sole provider and consumer of all your sensors and actuators, which isn't quite as representative if uh, your hardware and sensor is distributed across many devices. Well, actually, isn't on the gazebo plugins in Rust to individual nodes that we could like, oh yeah, but I guess they're in the same process now, so they would still end up being the same. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. So can can we actually do a, an implementation without a simulation, uh, without the hardware? I have a turtle bot, an actual one. But, mm. it's one of the things that they had mentioned is that they're trying, uh, the manipulation working group is trying to do something similar with, with the reference hardware, uh, you know, uh, Thing. And I was going to ask if they could simulate it so that we could use it, but it sounds like that's going to open up a whole nother can of worms. It, I mean, we, we, we could simulate it, just wouldn't be as accurate. Relevant, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it would be pretty close. Like, you you know, you've the complexity of trying to secure the stack, either navigation or move it, it's pretty, pretty challenging in itself. It's just... Uh, um, but I guess a lot of these robot arm platforms are so, also are like single endpoint, like, uh, the Robotique, um, robot arm. It's like really a wrapper. It's like one Ross driver around a wrapper. So all the interfaces for joint motor controller or the sensing of the camera on the arm kind of comes from one node anyway. So might not be too much of a deviation. I mean, we have we have a couple of arms, so we don't really have the. I don't think the sensor is necessary to really take advantage of move it. So I feel like either either yeah, we need we need them to sort of spec out a baseline reference system that we can get and then secure that, or yeah, just go simulation. So, so I guess like it depends. Maybe we can we can like spec the project in like multiple like I don't a bite size in in the sense that like I don't know like it's unclear how many resources would have we would have until Galactic to actually work on that as well. And so could like a first version which is just like you have a robot model, you have an RV's interface and a movie interface in RV's, and you can plan trajectory using movie planners. Um, and then like maybe just say, okay, we feed it a map with known obstacles and you have, we have this robot in that environment. We don't need to simulate sensors. We don't need to like build a map in real time. Uh, just give it an environment and ask it to make trajectories in there. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to solve a lot of the same problems, I guess, wouldn't you? And then, and then maybe that's something we can build on later. Yeah, that's my feeling. Yeah, that makes sense. So it sounds like that's something that we're interested in. Um, you know, and I'll say for, from everything that I've gotten from the community, there's just Ross to as a whole, there's, uh, it feels like there's going to be more and more of a push to make it simple. So if we can do the same through this, I think this, this helps demonstrate how to make security simple, straightforward, out of the box. Yeah, that's what we're striving for uh, with Ross too. I think that's that makes this an important kind of step along the way. Um, so I can follow up and continue to keep you updated on Matrix. But let me ask, you know, when we think about goals and what we're what we want to do, that seems like there's a decent bit of work in uh, doing that simulation work or doing you know creating a reference implementation. I think the the conversation we started about enabling security on a platform without a file system is also a piece of work. 
Um, do we want to keep both of those moving? Quite frankly, that's why I haven't reached out yet to continue moving that along because I don't want to bite off more than we can chew. So what do you think about weighing the two projects against each other? Can we do both? Should we pick one? Did the embedded working group have a respond? I only got, uh, I got one uh, person from a Prosima that's interested in it. Um, and then we were going to try and uh, just actually have a meeting and nail a few things down. We didn't get a lot of interest, um, but kind of a passing. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That's kind of a road, you know, put it on the roadmap thing. Well, I, could... I, I think the proposal we came up with, which was, you know, saying instead of instead of build without a file system something more generic like build for an embedded target right i think that's something that the greater ecosystem is going to have to buy off on and then something that like the, our work item out of that is going to be supporting that in rcl and and you know only building the security components when that is is set that type of thing but we still need the the agreement on the design before we do anything Are you saying that we don't have any security components when we're building in a embedded environment? No, no, I just mean when we can make we can make some assumptions about what that is, you know, or we can or we can have a number of properties associated with that rather than rather than just saying, uh, yeah, so, you know, build build everything without a file system. I mean, remember, we talked about this a couple what like a month ago. Where that was, I mean, what if, like environment variables is not necessarily part of the file system, right? But that's, it's a similar type of thing that's not necessarily supported on embedded platforms. So are you going to, are you going to go with like the really fine grain build without environment variables, build without file systems, and those will have to grow over time? Or are you going to have more of a, a, a wider, you know, build for this target device and this target device has a set of properties? Well, it, it seems that like in 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 both cases, I mean the this is a scope that's much wider than security right, itself, that's what I mean. uh, and that would need buy-in both by the people that like requested the change, which is the micro ROS folks, but also some synchronization and buy-in from Open Robotics because we're basically talking about changing. Like having a way to define targets and tool chains and build the entire ROS2 stack for a specific tool chain. And that seems like a lot of work, but it also doesn't really seem like to fall on our plate. Yeah, I, I think we need to wait until the uh, middleware and the embedded group kind of make a decision on exactly what. And then we just kind of follow along and um, implement it for security. Right, exactly. That Yeah, that was my point. So it sounds like we want to let this one sit. I mean, I, I continue where the opportunity presents itself to just have the conversation, keep things moving, but I don't see that, that we're actually going to do any work on that for the time being then. Is that what uh, we agreed to? We can continue hashing out the topic that, that we started in discourse to try and get to a design, but I don't, that did, that topic didn't really take off. Right. Right. There was a little bit of, uh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but that's about it. All right. So we'll just, uh, that, that'll just be, you know, some post discussions and all, but no actual work on that one. Um, so um, what about the quality enhancements? So we've got a lot of, uh, of things. I added them to the agenda, the list of the laundry list of quality things. I think we came to the conclusion that most of this, um, has to do with documentation, improving a lot of documentation and so on. Um, how much do we do we want to actually explicitly work on that or set goals for that? Um, or are we still waiting on uh, other dependencies? Before we I mean, we're definitely waiting on other dependencies, but that doesn't that doesn't mean we can't make progress on some of these other things. It just means that it won't. It, we're not going to be able to claim a quality level at the end of it without our dependencies. You know. Um, so it's a question of priority, I guess. 
Yeah, I guess I'm still I'm still a strong proponent from for improving documentation regardless of what oh, quality stamp we get on the site. Uh, especially today is a very good day to have this meeting because I received like two different emails from two different like companies today that will ask Estras to questions on private emails, uh, which is another thing that like I think we have a like kind of a, a problem on is like people like don't use online resources or like don't use raw centers or whatever, even if we try to tell them to. Uh, and so most of these questions were really based on like, oh, I didn't see any example on like how to use SRS2 for services and actions, or how do you do this, or how do I like I don't know, prevent someone from like just setting an environment variable and like disabling security for my specific I don't know OEM component. And so I think there are a lot of things that like could be very easily solved by more tutorials and more documentation on the SRS2 repo or on Rust index. Yeah, I was going to say, what if we made a security section on, on the index? I, I think there is. It's just like, it's just one page that basically redirects to the Rust2 Linux tutorial of SRS2, mm -hmm. but we could add stuff to it. Yeah, I say we flesh it out and build on the, you know, you can build on the the examples in earlier tutorials because that explains, you know, we, like we can use the talker and listener and then we can use services and. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. So the, the user goes through the whole, you know, uh, hoops for learning about the ROS2 core features from the, the demos. And then after they're sort of familiar, they can revisit and how to apply. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. On the subject of people not using the resources online, I personally don't use Ross Answers all that much anymore because I've not actually found it to help me all that much. And I'm wondering if other people might have the same experience and that might turn them away from it. It's, um, it's a tough thing. Like, uh, I think it's sort of wallowing in a whole bunch of beginners. And then if you're experienced enough, you like don't go there and visit and then answer. So I think it's suffering from uh, not as many experts answering questions. Yeah, it seems to be where my questions go to die. <laughs> so. There's also like a lot and a lot of new questions or like uh, I've seen this before. So I think. Uh, Maybe 75% questions I do answer, I end up just linking to the previous answer. But um, maybe discoverability is a bit hard. The site's kind of old. I think there's a uh, Ross discourse thread on updating it to be like Stack Overflow. I the think they were saying to move it to Stack Overflow, but I'm not sure where that thread has gone. It just kind of quieted down. It seemed like uh, OR was discussing something about it with the uh, Stack Exchange. I don't know more about that, though. Yeah, and in, in general, I think Ross Answers has like two issues. One is discoverability, and like most of the time, like you search for like the same problem as someone faced three years ago, but because they use Ross kinetic in their question, and you're looking for Rust noetic, then you don't find it or whatever. Uh, so there is definitely an issue there with a lot of duplicates, but because it's hard to find the original question. And then if you have like very specific questions, uh, because there are like not that many experienced people that like answer on a daily basis on Rust answers, uh, your questions may also go there to die because the one person that answers 80% of Rust answers questions doesn't know about it. It's also like a pretty hard mix of like gen genuine questions and like pseudo bug reports. And then you're like, mm, you have to actually go to the package, maybe report that as a bug. Yeah, well, that in general is pretty difficult because most of the time people open issues on my repo and I'm like, that's a question. Just go and write answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, like anyway, I, I, think, I think we're like Welcome going to open off things. topic, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, in general, I think if we can provide better documentation uh, so that people, when they do a Google search, either like they end, on, end up on Rust Index or on the GitHub repo, and then I'm still encouraging people to go on Rust Answers and encourage us who know about that specific topic to try to answer as many questions as possible in there so that people can find the information.
Yeah, I just find my niche. I have I subscribe to the Docker tag and security tag, and then so I try to handle some of those. So it sounds like we, we really want to do some work on the reference implementation with Move It. We really want to do some work on improving quality through documentation. There's one other, um, I think, kind of big effort item that was left is the test failures. And Mikhail, I think you've been kind of pushing that along. Um, is that something where we need to put some work into as well? Well, so in general, I think, yes, it's better to have an integration test pass. Uh, so uh, but that's something like I've been, I've been fixing like uh, issues that are assigned to the working group as they come. Uh, but this one, I like uh, didn't have time to look into it. And it's a flaky test, so it's a bit more like harder to find. And it's only with our TPS, which makes it also harder to figure out. Um, but I think in general, like we don't have that many integration tests. And so it would be great if the ones we have do pass. Uh, so I would be in favor of us putting work on it. But then I'm saying that I'm not sure I would have time to put work on it. So a bit unfair for me. That's the one that that only sometimes fails, right? In test security. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> this the, is so hard to debug. The integration tests that I include currently are are basically just a matrix of test cases to explore whether it's using the key store properly or whether the permissions are adequate. Um, is there any kind of other state space that's exploring security configurations? Yeah, no, it's actually not even testing access control. Uh, I think the tests right now are just like uh, getting, getting a list of nodes, generating a key store with artifacts for all of these nodes, launching these nodes, and making sure that they do connect and do receive messages. Uh, with a given maximum timeout, that's pretty big. Um, and for some reason, like usually the slower one for discovery is connect and the timeout is basically like defined according to that. Uh, but right now this issue, we don't have it with Cyclone, we don't have it with connect, but only with fast RTPS and only sometimes when like usually fast RTPS is fast to connect. So I'm not sure why they don't connect and we don't receive messages. And then it times out, right? Yeah. Um, three follow-ups. Uh, the so you said it's not testing access control. Is that because the governance file is set to something different, or the permissions are like star star? Permissions are like star star. We don't provide it to policy file. Okay. Um, and then it's failing. Do you think that's Maybe primarily because of discovery overhead or um, just some maybe something else is flaky? To be fair, I don't know because they seem to be running on like isolated environments and with a specific domain ID and there is no two tests running in parallel. So I wouldn't expect that much overhead or at least network congestion. Um, so no, I, I don't know. Have you ever managed to duplicate it locally? The only time I've seen it is in the build farm. I think I have. Uh, I haven't tried for a while, but I think last time I like just like looked at like how often it was fading, and I basically found like at least one example of it every night. Um, I tried to replicate it on my machine. It didn't happen very often, but I just did a call con retest until fail. I don't know, like twenty, and I could make it happen. Uh, Mikael, uh, can I contact you uh, and uh, we can share some uh, some uh, anything that you saw uh, uh, regarding these tests? Maybe uh, we can help from our side to see and debug what's what's happening in there. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll just drop you my email address. I mean, it's, it's everywhere online, but you would find it. But just in case. You could, uh, you could, you could put the conversation on the the matrix, and then we could all follow your debugging process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to find how to make that app work again because 
I never get notifications. But I go in there and this gets there. Okay, great. Thank you. The, the other thing with the cyclone that has security is jiggery, right? Yeah. So we could try and see if, uh, at least if the flakiness is repeatable on a, another middleware. Just a spot, spot for smoke and whatnot. Yeah, I, I, I'll have another look, but like, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think it failed uh, in Cyclone since we added the same integration test in Cyclone. But uh, I didn't look very closely, and I'm not receiving like build farm emails, so maybe it's been failing every night, and I don't know about it. I'll have a look. So we're about to the end of our uh, end of our time here. Uh, so I'll just roll that up and just say, for for G turtle things that we want to work on um, are the moving implementation and documentation, improving documentation on SROS2. I think those two actually go hand in hand. Um, and then uh, I think we also want to work on, uh, on getting the test failures fixed. It sounds like that's kind of a second priority, but it's also also important. that will just kind of happen uh, through continued discussions. You just keep that in front of us. Um, so no actual uh, explicit work other than conversations about uh, implementing SROS2 on a system without, uh, on, on, on the non-pile system implementation until we get some more from embedded uh, or the middleware working group. Um, so so I'll, I'll summarize that, put that in a pull request out to uh, uh, GitHub and we'll start doing minutes that way and please make comments on there. Uh, does anybody ha have anything else uh, that you'd like to discuss this week? Well, just uh, uh, yeah, I comment regarding uh, the issue we have with the RMF with Marco. We're trying to, we are iterating with, it, with this, but uh, we didn't reach uh, any solution because we cannot reproduce, reproduce very well, but um, we are assigning more resources on that. Yeah, uh, this week. So let's see if we can create a solution. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so I added three points at the end of the agenda. I'm not sure if you can see them. Um, I'll be clearly apologize for missing that. Sorry. Yeah, uh, no worries. I'll just be very quick. Uh, so one of them is, uh, uh, first of all, sorry for missing out last week uh, or last, last meeting because uh, it's a bit late for me sometimes. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rush Lounge, uh, I, was, I was playing around with it. I got, um, I got to see the, uh, the meeting notes from, from the previous meeting and I, and, I, and I managed to make it work. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's got access control. It doesn't seem to have it. Is it? Is is that the the status of it? You're talking about um, about this pull request. Yes, that's, yeah. that's the that's, that's no. The, it is, it does not have access control. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So it, it's just encryption right now. Access control mm -hmm. should be difficult. We just didn't want to. We just didn't want to explode that PR. We wanted to start with sort of our. Our MVP, if you will. Um, okay. The review there, it, Jacob is 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 uh, pushing us toward having sort of a plugin architecture there for Ross Launch, which I don't think exists. Um, so there may be a long path to actually getting this landed. I, I I'm curious to see what that turns into. Mm. So. Um... Currently, there's no plan until this goes through, I guess, right? To to work on the access control side. Right, exactly. I mean, why make mm -hmm. why make the review even larger if we if we having trouble landing this? Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, then another thing about the um, I listened to the to the recording and I I heard that you guys are looking for use cases like the Move It one. So I would like to um, we're, we're gonna use 
as a security on on the RMF project anyway. So I think that's a good use case if you guys um, agree with that. And in fact, we already have like a demo. I, I ran a demo that you can you can access, uh, and it runs on the simulator. I'm not familiar with the acronym. What? So RMF is a project that uh, Open Robotics has here in Singapore, and it's mainly um, a manager of fleets of robots. You can see a bunch of demos in the link that I just put on the chat. So it's it's just basically managing fleets of robots. Gotcha. I think that could be a, a cool project. Um, like I, I've been wanting to play with it for a while. I uh, every time I tried, like it was not compiling, and every time I find an issue, they were like, "Oh yeah, wait for the next release, and we'll have the dependencies sorted out." So I kind of gave up on it. Um, but if it's now in like uh, a working state that is like easily compilable, usable, and testable in simulation, like that could be an interesting use case. Yeah, well, the demos at least we should be pretty easy to run. Uh, it's mostly compiling a few of the repos and and just just running a ROS launch file. And for the um, for the security part, I created a Tmax script, so it should be also similar. Um, not that hard to run. Yeah, and the last the last note that I have is that. Um, there's a need in in this project in the RMF project to well we have we have probably several needs on terms of security one of them that we identified is the need to re, um, revoke keys so I don't know uh, I would like to hear because I, I have we haven't um, discussed much yet but I would like to hear ideas or if you guys want to think about how how to do that because so we have we are using ROS to communicate robots. And they're usually all around a big space, right? So we work with hospitals, airport, and the robot is, is in different places. So if one of those entities get compromised, um, we can't have a person running around with a USB stick changing all the keys. Um, so we would have to find a way to revoke keys in a certain way. Uh, yeah, that you 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 could use the PKI to generate a, a revocation list. I think that might be a good thing that the Ross CLI could kind of maybe do for you. You just tell it, "Hey, this key and this key store is now revoked," and it auto generates a, a revocation list that you could then serve through a different process. But um, maybe there's a convenient to do that in Python as well. And the ROS2 CLI could just stand up a little server to do that for you. Does do the do the middleware support CRLs? It's in the specification, but I don't know which implementations. Hi, May. Do you have any any thoughts yeah, on that? I think that? they all, they all do. Yeah, I think. So the question is if the implementation supports. I didn't get that. The certificate revocation lists. <clears throat> I don't think uh, we support that. Um, I'm I'm going to confirm that for the next meeting. Yeah, because I think I mean a while back I think when you implemented the plugin in the first, uh, you you had tests for that with revocation lists, uh, but I never I never used them in practice. I just saw the were tests for it. Let me do a quick search and I will write something in the notes of the meeting. Anyway, I will answer you in the next meeting. Thank you, Jaime. Marco, I'm curious. Um, I, I need to look at, at, at your demos a little bit, and maybe you can just tell me if they'll answer my question. But I'm, I, I'd like to learn more about your architecture. You know, where are your, where is your CA? You know, where would a CRL be hosted? That 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 type of thing, in a way that makes sense. Um, because you can't just you can't just revoke a certificate. You also need to. I mean, that'll just make that robot stop working. Is that really your end goal? You 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 saying that we we would want to stop the robot? 
Well, ideally, we we would we would like to isolate that robot, right? So, so if you revoke them, you, then your thinking is that robot essentially stops working, and then you can go as, fix it on you know on your own time, basically. I guess that would be the, in, yeah. I I guess that would be the best approach initially. Um, particularly on the topology of the inter-robot communication, is this like a whole bunch of heterogeneous robots or are there like certain robots from certain vendors? I'm just thinking maybe there's a, um, maybe a reason to introduce a hierarchy of uh, CAs. And yeah. Then you could say exactly. like if it's, if a, as opposed to a certain robot getting compromised, a certain org, sub-org gets compromised, you could revoke their sub-CA. Maybe that's been the, an advanced topic, but but I mean, just sort of on the on the topic of of this being a, a use case we can use to prove things out. I, I want to make sure we have an understanding of how this is set up. You know. Yeah. So we have a whole book. So I can send you the the link. Um, if you guys want to have a look, there's a lot of. Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be great. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is actually, Marco, that's a really interesting use case. I think that's a use case that is not probably as critical in the in the move it use case. I think move it is probably more interested in permissioning uh, you know, individual things and the idea of revocation and how you would actually structure it, whether you'd use intermediate CAs and revoke groups of things at a time and have to have a CA structure. I think it's a really interesting use case. Um, so I think it's, a, yeah, it's, yeah, and I think fleet management is, yeah, security is going to be key in that whole space. So, yep. So I got to ask one, oh, one question of the group. Do you guys mind if we tend to go long from time to time? We scheduled the meetings for, for a half an hour, um, when we doubled them up to twice a month. Uh, so we often seem to run long, especially when we have good discussions. I hope that's not kind of a, a red flag for anybody. My work is fairly flexible about my hours so long as they're logged. So if I run long on meeting, then I just shift my lunch hour over a little bit. Yep. I usually plan in blocks for an hour anyway. Okay, good. I'll leave it on um, yes. now. Go One ahead. question that may come up: Marco mentioned that like it's he's it's pretty late for him sometimes, and so if he wants to join on a regular basis, maybe we we can then we can discuss it on Matrix or anything. But like maybe we can consider uh, like not running over for people for who it's very late, or like try to adjust the times as we did in the past when we have people on like many different time zones. Uh, but to answer the original question, I'm happy if it goes over. I'm also blo usually blocking one hour, but. Okay, so. We can, meet, we can meet an hour earlier. Yeah, I'll take a note to just open up a conversation on Matrix about uh, meeting times, because I know we were, we were alternating, and then I think everybody ended up pretty close to time zones, and now we're back right now and again. So I just, uh, I don't want to cut anybody out simply because we're not meeting at the right time. So, so I'll move that over to matrix. So. Any other things you want to cover before we uh, close? Um, On the permission file, I, I played just a bit half an hour ago uh, with uh, just uglifying and prettifying the files. Uh, I don't have some things that work, but I think it should be, should be doable. And so I'll try to like iterate on that until we have something more like proper from the DGS folks. Great, Sid. Could you uh, just copy the links from the messages and drop them in the meeting so we don't lose it? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we'll do.
Okay, so uh, that's all I got. Uh, if nobody else has anything else, um, thank you very much. I think it's a great conversation. And uh, for those of you in the US. Just a bit, uh, we do support certificate of occasionist. I will write a, a link to the documentation in the agenda. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you next or next meeting and uh, see you on Discourse as well or on Matrix as well. And Discourse. <laughs> and Discourse, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.